we are in the world of statistics, and statistics is about collecting, organizing, and analyzing data. And part of what we're going to do today is that analyzing data. So we're going to be working on mean, median, mode, and range. And I want you to think of a data set. And when we look at a data set, we can see that our data is spread across from smallest to largest, and usually data bunches kind of in the center. So I'll have a few pieces of data that are really small, a few pieces of data that are really big, but for the most part, most of my data will fall right here at the top of this hill. Now, if I split that data set down the center, I can look at my mean, my median, and my mode. And those are called measures of central tendency. And the mean, median, and mode should all be very similar numbers that really talk about that center of that data set, but they don't have to be identical. Now, if I go from my largest piece of my data down to my smallest piece of my data, that is called the range of the data. So our job today is to calculate these measures of central tendency. So let's say I asked a statistical question and I said, what are the states that you've traveled to or that you've lived in? Well, when I asked the question, I had a bunch of students respond, well, I only lived in one state or three states or five or two or five or two and so on. So I get the spread of data. So now it's time for me to analyze this data. Well, first, I want to organize it. And always when you're working with any of these statistical measures of central tendency, you want to order your data from least to greatest. If we do that as our first step, it kind of sets us up for everything that we're going to need to do. So when I order my data, my smallest pieces of data are on the end to the left, and my largest pieces of my data are on the end to the right. And I went and I organized this, and I see three people said they've lived or visited one state, four people have visited two, one has visited three, one has visited four, two have visited five, two have visited seven, then there's one person with 10, and another person with 12. So, if we're going to look at the range, the easiest piece of a measure of central tendency is always the range. You're just going to take your largest piece of data and you're going to subtract your smallest piece of data. So if I take my maximum of 12 and I subtract my minimum of 1, 12 minus 1 is 11. And it tells me that my spread of data is spread across 11 numbers. Now, my mode is the most frequently occurring piece of data. When I go and look at this, because it's ordered, I can easily see how many times each of the answers um, were, were responded. So, if I look at my ones, I see I have three ones. I have four twos, I have one three, one four, two fives, two sevens, one ten, and one twelve. Well, clearly, the number that most often happens is the number four, and that would be my mode. So now we're going to look at the median, and the median really is that exact center point of that data set. And so if I have this ordered, and it's key for median that you have to have your data set ordered, all I need to do is I need to count my way into the center. And I usually just use my fingers, and I go to the smallest and the largest, and then I keep moving my way in until I'm exactly in the center of that piece of data. And when I get to the center, it's at 3. It means on this curve, my 3 would be right there. So for odd numbers of pieces of data, you're going to end up on one number. But let's say I had one more piece of data, and instead of 15 pieces of data, I have 16. Well, when I go to the center on that and I work my way back in, notice I have two numbers in the center and I want to go exactly in between those two numbers to get my median and that would be three and five tenths. So for an even piece of data, you're usually going to be between two numbers. You have to find that exact center piece. For an odd piece of data, it just goes directly to the middle number. 
Now, when I look at my mean, my mean takes the most calculation. So what we're going to want to do is add up all the pieces of data. So I'm going to add 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, and I'm going to go all the way down up to 12. When I did that, I got 64. Now clearly 64 is not the center point of this data because it's much bigger than even my biggest piece of data. So in order to get that center part, we're going to take 64 and we're going to divide it by the number of pieces of data I had. And I had 15 pieces of data when I collected that data. So I'm going to take that 64 and divide it by 15 and I, I get 4. 0.267, and usually for the mean, you will get a decimal. Now, I want you to compare our 4.267 and 3 pretty close to the same. Yes, usually my median and my mode will not be exact, but they'll be close to each other. And this 4 still represents kind of that center piece of data if we're looking here, it's about exactly in the center. The reason why it's not exact is because sometimes I'm going to have really big numbers that pull my mean towards that big number. And those big numbers are called outliers. So notice my 10 and 12 look pretty different than the rest of my pieces of data. So my mean was pulled more towards that 10 and 12 to make it a little bit bigger. So those are the, the measures of central tendency. They all describe a data set, but really they're looking at that centerpiece of where all that data falls. So that's about all there is today. Now it's up to you. Have some fun.